I want to leave the world. I don't want to be in a world where a movie like this exists. Might as well do it through my head and have it like that scene in Friday 13 Part 4 when Jason and Corey Feldman put the machete in his head and went through him. No, not really. I'm being sarcastic. Because I know people are going to be like, you want to kill yourself? No, I don't want to kill myself. I'm, I'm just, you know, going crazy. I'm not like this in real life. I'm just, you know, joking around. But, um... You know, I said I wasn't going to give this guy my attention anymore. I wasn't going to watch his movies after Alone in the Dark. But I just couldn't help myself because next up I have two rants that I just want thrown in the trash and done with before I move on to much better movies I actually want to review. Um, both of which are directed by people who do not know how to direct. And, well, the second one directed by two guys uh, and... Uh, well, two or three, considering these two guys work together a lot. But um, um, you'll see what I mean in the next video. But right now, my attention is focused on this movie and this director, who should never have directed again after his last two films. And it really ticks me off that he has more work planned. And it makes me wonder, why is he still directing? And it ticks me off that people still allow this guy to direct. And it's like, why? You saw his box office grows on his past two films, including this one. So why is he still getting work? I don't know why. It's just stupid because there are so many other directors who deserve another chance to direct. They may have had a flop in their time, but that doesn't mean they deserve to be exiled. This guy's had like three flops from what I've seen so far. And it's just amazing how bad it is. It's just amazing that they're still letting him to direct. But what film is that, you may be asking? That film is none other than Blood Rain. Yeah. My hair's up because it's because it knows I'm getting mad, getting ready to go um, curse the Yami Ha from Dragon Ball Z. And no, I don't watch Dragon Ball Z. I know I just know the saying, but um, yeah, Blood Rain. This is a film that first came out at the Austin Film Festival in 2005, and if you live in the U.S., though, it came out in 2006. Directed by Uva Bull, or as Dead Pit Radio calls him, Uwe, because it sounds better. Who, of course. Doesn't need an introduction, but even after my ranting from last year's review of Alone in the Dark, he's still getting jobs. And this is, of course, based on the video game Blood Rain from Majesco Entertainment, who were originally going to do that demonic game from Grandma's Boy. But fortunately, that never came about. Um, but that um, Blood Rain came out for the PlayStation 2, the Xbox, the GameCube, and I think the PC. Um, I think this also this game also takes a little bit from Blood Rain 2, which was just released on the uh, PlayStation 2 and Xbox and PC. And like all Bulls movies, nobody listened to me when I said don't let this guy direct anymore. I had said that a year ago when I reviewed his other movie, Alone in the Dark. But now he has more movies planned on the Attack of the Show. He's, he wants to do a Hitman movie with Vin Diesel as the character. Vin, I love you in Pitch Black, Triple X, and Chronicles of Riddick. Please say no. You can do better. I can see you as Agent 47. I really can. You really have the part. But you can get someone better than Bull to direct that movie. He also wants to do a movie called Seed, which is writing, which he's writing and directing himself. And as Dead Pit Radio said, I didn't know who he could write. Neither could I, did I. But apparently he's doing that. Um... That steals from Shocker and many other slasher films. He's also wanting... He also is in doing a Far Cry movie. Enough! Please stop letting this guy direct. So I'm going to keep saying it right now. Please stop. He is contributing nothing to the film world. And he has no reason to still be there. Please stop him. Because this movie shows he's still unfit to direct. And even... With the new writer, he can't do it. And apparently, I didn't even know this till I saw my friend uh, Kyle's review, but he gave the original writer such a hard time because not only did my friend reveal, uh, Kyle, a.k.a. Jurassic Godzilla fan, reveal how he rewrote the script, but I also found an article talking about his experience making it, and they asked him to steal stuff from other movies. He wanted the character to feel like a Batman or Blade or whatever, or the Crow, 
and and his grammar is horrible. If you look at that article and you see his grammar, it looks as though it was written by a fifth grader. I am not kidding you. Uh, uh, well, fifth graders get read better. A kindergartner. Or even a preschooler. Granted, he's German, but, you know, it's like... Yeah, but... um, He insisted that they steal stuff from other movies. He also insisted there should be shootouts, car chases, and guns... Uh, Gun shoot, shootouts, or whatever you want to call it. Um, but, because that's a horror movie. No! Don't believe me? I have the article linked right here. I will put it in the description with the writer talking about it. Some of it has already been revealed, but if you want to see how he incompetently handles productions, go look at that article, and you'll see that. Now, this time, unlike Alone in the Dark, where I could find so much information on the production surrounding the movie, this one, I seemed to have a hard time finding info. The only one I could find was a little a little section in Fangoria um, 249, issue 249, where they talked about his time making it. Um, the reason why I'm looking down here is because I have one of them counting back a little bit, but... I had such a hard time finding info, and even that little article didn't tell much. Shows that they weren't willing to waste their time there, so I thank Van Goyer for that. But they have much better films to do, like The Hills Have Eyes, which I'll review another time. But um, apparently, the writer on this film was Jennifer Turner, who wrote American Psycho. I don't know what she was smoking when she wrote this. This does not seem like material from her, since American Psycho is such a strong movie. And this was given a budget of $25 million. Really? You couldn't... There are directors who fail, and they're given lower budgets on their next film. Why? And apparently, at one point, Uwe revealed that he hired real prostitutes for a particular scene. Wow. What an idiot. But shooting lasted for a specific amount of time. They screened it. Somehow it got positive reviews. I don't know if they were genuine or they were paid. I'm going to guess paid, but who knows. Uwe also revealed on G4 that he had such a hard time getting it into a certain amount of theaters to play the film because they were still playing all the Christmas movies. Maybe the theaters didn't want nothing to do with Bowl, so they gave it a limited run. And in the interview view, he's like, I hope people drive out to see Blood Rain. No one's going to drive to 55 different theaters when there's only 985 theaters playing the film. And no one's, and I think everybody knew, because he directed Alone in the Dark, there is no hope for this guy. And there was a much better movie playing that day. Because with a budget of $25 million, this movie bombed big time. Even though it made more money than Alone in the Dark, it was still a big bomb because that same weekend we had Hostel, which I think deserved the number one spot because Hostel's an awesome movie. You may disagree with me, but I love Hostel. Um, I didn't even rush out to see it because I didn't want to give my money to him because there are much better movies that I want to give my money to this year. Or um, There are much better movies I want to give my money to, I should say, but... Um, yeah, and I've already given a few few of my hard-earned money to much better films, but I downloaded it because I didn't want to watch it, and I downloaded the next one, but uh, it bombed. It's continuing to drop. We'll see more on the final thing later, but uh, like both past two films, uh, the movie received negative reviews. On Rotten Tomatoes, it has, it has a 4%. While that's higher than Alone in the Dark, it's still not good. Where to start with giving an example of how hated this film is? How about Roger Moore of the Orlando Sentinel said, Who is Uwe Boll and why does he hate moviegoers? So, the German hack, the one-man bitskerig of bad, is the worst filmmaker in the movies today. Or this one, Bill Gerbon of Pop Matters. Blood Rain is a movie of unconnected plot dots, and believe me, we'll get to that. In the hands of director Uwe German Tax Dodge Bull, so that's why he's getting movies. A simple both sword and is a, a simple sword and sorcery story with vampiric overtones turns into genre jumping attempts to find an audience. Foy Wonder 
What kind of screen name is that? I don't know. But it says it's essentially a feature-length version of what could have been told in a five-minute flashback sequence during a real Blood Rain movie. Stacy Newton of Georgia Strait also gave the movie a negative review, saying, So how does film a filmmaker bounce back from al an almost universally reviled action horror mistake? Well, if your name isn't Uba Bull, you don't. I could only find two positive reviews, which is amazing considering there was only one positive review for Alone in the Dark, and that being L.Y.T. Thompson, who of LYTRules.com said, it'd be a stress to call the movie good, but at least it's fun bad. Spoiler, it's neither one of those things. It's neither fun or bad. Fun, fun bad or fun. It's neither. And someone named Wesley Morris, who, had lo who looks like an aborted love child of Wesley Snipes and Michael Jai White. I don't know why that just came to me. Um, he said, the first might be, this film might be the first of its kind, something to bring maximum subscribers, video games, and loyal logo viewers together. Again, it's amazing that this movie even has two positive reviews. And of course... The audience hated it, this film, because on the audience side is a low rating of 17%. How is that higher than the critic score? I don't know, but it's still pretty bad. And IMDb is a 2.9 out of 10, which I'm crying tears of joy from the side of. As you could tell, like usual with Bull, this movie sucks. And it's amazing that from movie to movie, he can't make a good movie. And each movie gets worse and worse. I'll be honest, though. I'll say, of the three, this one I had the easiest easier time watching, Jing, because this was the least painful to watch. Because, because for one thing, I do like the cast. I'll say that right off the bat. Um, I know I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but the cast, I don't mind. Um, but that isn't saying much. This movie still sucks. And even with it being being the least bad, there's still problems that I have with it. And even with the cast, which I like, um, I like the cast members, I wish they were in a much better film with the material that they're given. And you know, I looked on a few forums, there are people that seriously think this was better than Hostel. Why they're comparing that to Hostel, I don't know. Maybe because they came out on the same day. Hostel has so much more in this film. But people find this movie better? Please, can I have an explanation? I will not be mad. I swear to God, I will not be mad. I swear with all my heart, I will not threaten. I will not yell. I will not do any of that. But I won't get it. But I'm not going to say you're stupid. If you do, to each their own. But I'm pretty sure 95% of the people hate this movie like I did. I'll explain why later. But the cast, once again, what is with the big name cast that he gets? For example, you got Kristana Loken playing Rain from Terminator 3, Rise of the Machine. She was the main villain in that. You have Michael Pear from Streets of Fire and Bad Moon. Uh, Michelle Rodriguez is in this from Resident Evil, The Fast and the Furious, and SWAT. And Ben Kingsley is also in this from Gandhi, The and Species. Not only him, you got Michael Madsen, Mr. Blonde from Reservoir Dogs, as well as Species 1 and 2, Kill Bill 1 and 2, and Tony Cipriani from Grand Theft Auto 3, who, by the way, played a better Tony Cipriani than the guy they got in Liberty City Stories. I'm going to say that right now. And Meatloaf is also here, and I don't know why, Billy Zane. What are all these talented people doing in a movie like this? It's ridiculous. Ridiculous! I can make a movie with this cast and it'd be much better. Now, as you can tell, I don't like this movie. And I'll explain why later. But before I start, I just want to say, I played a little bit of the game, mainly the first one, but I never finished it because I sold it for gas money. I haven't played the second one, which I know it takes a little bit from from, um, because I looked it up a little bit, and honestly, I want to get the game, I want to buy back the game and play it again, because I think it, I think, I want, I want to see the true Blood Rain, um, but I looked up some stuff on it, wow, they really butchered the story, because unlike the game, which takes place during World War II, and it takes place in this time where, 
where she's basically like this girl trying to basically take down this guy. Okay, I don't remember. Um, take down these particular group of Nazis, which I found unique, and it was actually different. This takes place in what looks like the unused blueprints for an Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion level. And you know what? That's an insult to Bethesda who created that game. Because that game is awesome. And that game has some of the best graphics I've seen on the Xbox 360 so far. I'm pointing over there because I have my Xbox 360 there and I've been playing Oblivion a lot. That's why the reviews have been going to, haven't been on as much. But we meet this woman named Rain, played by Kristana Loken, who is a different kind of vampire called the Daphimir. I forget if that's part of the game or not, but... That means she doesn't feast on human blood. It doesn't. She doesn't die by crosses, but she still has a weakness to holy water. And we learn in the movie that she became the way she is because she is the daughter of this vampire named Kagan, played by Ben Kingsley, who we learned raped her mother when she was a young child, which is why she is the way that she is. And he later uh, murdered her mother when she when she wouldn't continue to give him sex. And since then, she's been a circus freak for this freak show where they where they kill lambs and where they kid cut lambs. I'm grateful. You have a scene of like a lamb or a goat being cut and blood coming out. And she's a circus freak. And one night she sets out to find Kagan and adventure mother. Meanwhile, you have these people who are part of this thing called the Brimstone Society. They include Vladimir played by Michael Madsen, Sebastian played by Matthew Davis, and Katrine, played by Michelle Rodriguez, who are trying to hunt her down, but they immediately get drawn in into working with her when they see what where everything is at and what Kagan is doing. Will all this madness stop, or will Kagan keep it going? You know what? Right there. Right there. See? Shows, shows how many shits I give about this film. I can't even come up with a cool and creative idea. idea. Uh, will they be able to? Because I just want to get this movie out of my face. I really just want to get this movie out of my face. Because I don't know what happened with the story. Because I may have not played a lot of the game, but from what I've looked up and played, this barely resembles the game. Why, Bull, do we have this raped mother subplot? It doesn't further the story. It doesn't give her character arc. And all it is, it just gives a brutal background to her that feels unnecessary and unneeded. And we hardly get to know anything about her. Because the movie just thrusts us so quick into the action without any sort of context. We don't care. And it's just one night she decides, oh, I'm going to go find him. And, and then she's out of the cage. We don't see her breaking out. The only way we see her breaking out is through a flashback. And that's another thing. This movie relies so heavily on flashbacks. It's at points where we don't need them. Like, oh, how did she get out of the cage? Flashback. There's another scene where, I kid you not, they, they literally, the group finds uh, this, these group of people who have been slaughtered and murdered by her. And we know it's her. We literally know it's her. But they have to show us the whole incident because Bo wants to show blood and gore 24-7. We don't need 20 million flashbacks for the most minimal details that we can envision on our head. As I said, it also strips everything that made the games work so well that it barely becomes a Blood Rain movie. Who wanted to see her in a medieval times era killing people? Nobody. If they just went the route of the game and did the World War II era, the Nazis took particular instances about elements from the story and, and did that, uh, that maybe it worked better. And you know what? People love to give Doom shit. The movie Doom with uh, The Rock. I loved that film. I really liked it a lot. I thought it was a well-made film. I liked it took the best parts of the Doom game for me, particularly Doom 3, because that's one of, that's my favorite Doom, I should say. But it took particular elements that I loved about that game, and it made it, and, and it stayed true to it. It may not have been, a lot of people have said it may not have been the definitive Doom, but I loved it for what it was. Um, 
But at the same time, I should be glad they didn't go the World War II route because with the technicality level like this, I wouldn't want to see what Bull had in store because the production design is terrible. It doesn't even, rese even resemble the time period this is in. It looks like a set. Everything looks fake and phony. I find it hard to believe this is set in medieval times. Even the freaking costumes look like they were bought from a Halloween store. I kid you not. They look phony, they look cheap, and they, and they don't even look like they took some time out of the day to make them look like the period. That is how bad they look. They even have a few of the actors in wigs, and I shit you not, you can see the hairline on a few of them. That is how fake they are, and that is how cheap this movie is. This was made for $25 million in the budget. There is no excuse why this movie looks so fake. There is also some shots of transition that don't even resemble the actual location of where this takes place. Like there's this castle where Kagan is in. It looks like a shot out of something from from the Three Musketeers, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, or even a god dang Lord of the Rings movie. How is it you cannot make your translation look like it in the final film? This is to fool the audience. Well, it isn't fooling me. And the fight scenes themselves. Granted, I appreciate the, the R rating and the fact that they didn't use CGI blood like Alone in the Dark did. But I have something to say about that later. But the fight scenes are shot poorly. There's one point where this big monster with this big hammer hit, um, starts swinging it around. There's one point when the king's like this. The camera's right here. He hits the camera. Uh, I don't know if Bull is that stupid that he forgot to edit it out or thought it would work as a transition and then he left it in there thinking it would be a good shot. I don't know. No, but the fight scenes are lame. They're, they're shot poorly and they, they just aren't much. Compared to something like Blade 1 and 2 or Underworld or Underworld Evolution, which have some pretty brutal fight scenes and the directors of those movies know how to shoot scenes, this is just... This is just dumb. And there's some logic behind them. They're well shot and everything. So yeah, the fight scenes are lame. And at times there's an overuse of CGI, which I'll get into later. Okay, I'll say this. The acting in the film is not as bad as Alone in the Dark. It's just more forgettable. Kristana Loken, I don't want to get too hard on. Because I liked her in Terminator 3. I know a lot of people don't like Terminator 3. I like the movie. Um, is it better than the first two? I like it in its own way. I really do. But considering on Attack of the Show on G4, Bowl said she did her own horseback riding and fight scenes. So I appreciate the effort she put in. And she really looks the part. She has the face. She has the, the look. She has the body a little bit. Um, uh, and I will say, as much as I give the costume designer junk, um, I will say the suit on her looks like the video game. And there's a couple of notes where she sounds like the character. And she's giving it her all, but the material she has is weak. I mean, it's not her fault. I mean, it could have been just, she could have had a better script, but the material she has is weak. Um, she's given nothing to do, and it just, and at times her character just feels underdeveloped. But, yeah, she, I'm not going to put too much blame on her, or any of these actors, just the material. But it amazes me that so many talented actors are involved with this film. They have such piss-poor material to work with. For example, Michael Madsen, one of my all-time favorite actors, playing one of the characters in one of the members of the group. And I feel bad for Michael Madsen because I like him as an actor. It sucks that he has to get roles like this because he deserves better. But he's given nothing to do. Dude, he's really given nothing to do. He sounds bored. Bored. Uh, he's really trying to give it his all, but there's still that hint of boredness around him. Uh, but, you know, maybe he's just like, you know what, I'll do it for the paycheck. I think that's how everybody was. And a lot of these characters don't really have much development around them. Like Ben Kingsley's character, who all we know is that He's evil, and that's all we know. Michelle Rodriguez is part of the group. She out of nowhere decides she wants to become evil. Then there's Billy Zane, who may not have needed to be in the movie because he just stands around, around and says something random in a room and goes 
just away and just pops in and out. He doesn't play a part in the end, the end or in towards the story. He just is there and he doesn't even become the main bad guy. He's not even the hero or one of the heroes. He doesn't advance the story. So why is he here? To have a big name? This is stupid. Meatloaf is also embarrassing himself with real life prostitutes because again, it's cheaper to pl get. Such an idiot bull, I'm sorry to say. But yeah, also Udu Kier's here, shows how useless this cast is. Um, because he's just there to get killed. Again, I can write a script with these actors and actresses to their advantage and actually give them something to work with with besides the script that they have here and I feel bad for all of them because they deserve better. So the acting is horrible. While not as bad as Alone in the Dark, it's very forgettable. And last but not least is the special effects. And believe me, the salt is about to be put on this wound because they are horrible. From the main makeup, which granted are practical, I'm glad they went practical, but they look like Play-Doh was splattered on them and they're rubbery looking and at times they come off as laughable. And I remember a Dead Pit video where... I know I'm gra you know I know I'm not gonna grab that, but um, I remember a Dead Pit video where they were talking shit on the Hills Have Eyes remake and saying the special of well a, a radio spot that they did radio vi whatever you want to call it, but I remember point being they did a video they did a part on their show where they talked about the Hills Have Eyes remake and they talked about how bad the makeup is. The makeup in that film looks awesome. Compare, you want to talk about bad? Look at this, because they look horrible. They look laughable. Well, they look fake. Uh, they look like a straight-to-video horror film on those cheap cameras. They just look bad. Not only the vampire effects bad, but the blood itself is some of the worst-looking blood I've ever seen, because it looks less like blood and more like paint. Like, they literally opened paint cans and made that blood. It is that bad. I cannot believe that. Like, they literally opened paint cans. Like, there's shots of it where it splats down. That you can tell it's paint. And even, like, there's a scene at the end where it transitions, where it goes through the entire film with her sitting down and remembering. I literally saw the paint again. And it's like, wow. And the, the fight scenes are nothing. Underworld Evolution offered a lot more than this, as I said. I, and Cristano, and granted, I appreciate Cristiano Loca doing the fight scenes, but that's not enough to save this movie. And don't even get me started on the CGI, because it looks horrible, just like Alone in the Dark. Like, particularly parts where, like, the particular scene with the saws and that, oh, that whole thing of, like, whatever it's called, the challenging obstacle, it's the goal. To get the thing, but it really becomes so easy. The CGI saws would look horrible. I have seen episodes of Supernatural, and Supernatural is some good CGI um, that look better than this. But the bad CGI episodes, like the bug one, one they look better than this. And this, and there's that particular scene where Meatloaf literally gets melted. Dude, it looks so bad. It looks like a PS1 game. It just looks really bad. So, yeah. Oh, my God. I don't know what else to say. This is just a horrible film. And it shows how Bull is not, learning, is not willing to learn how to learn or mature from his mistakes. He and can't even make a movie worth a shit. So, I say for the last time. Please stop letting this guy direct. He can never do it. He can't direct, and he never will learn. It shows here. Because this movie is made with such incompetence, it shows that Bull is not... is That my thought about Bull being an alien wanting to fit in with civilization is true. It is that bad. So please, don't see it. So, with all that said, the final rating that I have for this is a 2 out of 10. It's lucky it's getting a 2 and not a 1 like Alone in the Dark. But at least the cast is doing what they can. At least they did some practical effects, which I appreciate. Granted, it looks horrible, but at least they went the practical route. route. But I can at least give some respect that they at least tried, but it's not enough. Just because you tried doesn't mean it's good. But yeah, I do not like this film. I, r I really don't. Don't see it.
But that's my review for Blood Rain, or Blood Shit, as I call it. And next time, I'm going to do a review of another piece of shit date movie. We're going to get that out of the way, and then thankfully, I get to go back to the good reviews and talk about Running Scared. But, yeah. I'll see you guys later. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of Blood Rain. Is there any fan out there who likes the film? I'd love to know. But be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Now, if you'll excuse me. I gotta go to... I gotta take a rest.